Yeah, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, I was debating about if I was going to put up a video or not, but I decided I will put up just a, a very quick one just to um, rule a line under the VFO. Um, I came home from work today and uh, quickly flashed up a common collector buffer followed by a common emitter amplifier to put on the on the other side of or the output or the point of the, the Franklin oscillator. Um, it's not too bad, I, I won't say it's perfect, but I think for my purposes it'll be just fine uh, with the filtering that I intend to use. So what I'll do now is I'll just sort of quickly run through um, the calculations that I elected to use um, and then a quick look at the LT Spice and we'll go from there. Um, there was a comment in the previous video about you know what, what's the point of what I'm actually doing and um, I guess just as a reminder that None of these videos are tutorials. None of them are, uh, you know, this is how you do things. Definitely not. This is purely about me just playing around uh, with the solder iron, the soldering iron here, um, and you know, hopefully encouraging others to to give homebrew a, a go. Um, it's it's not difficult. It it can be done. Um, and like I say, if if I can encourage others, that's great. But please, 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 these are definitely not how tos. They're definitely not tutorials or anything like that. So. Um, uh, yeah, and I know I sound like a crack record, but I just want to make that very clear. Okay, so in terms of uh, what I've done here, sorry about moving the camera. Um, like I mentioned, there's, there's two stages. There's the, the common collector stage that I spoke about in the last video, and then down here is the uh, the common emitter. Uh, in both cases, I've you know, right or wrong, what I like to do is have 10 milliamps quiescent current, uh, current flowing through both. Uh, for this one here, uh, I elected to have the emitter sitting at roughly sort of half, maybe between 0 and 12 volts, so at, um, at 6 volts, and and basically designed it around that. So, beta DC, um, again, at 10 milliamps, uh, the, the geometric mean of the two values out of the spec sheet, so using 173, so therefore our emitter resistor, um, 6 volts, as I just mentioned, divided by 10 milliamps equals 600 ohms uh, and I'll use 620 ohms as the nearest standard value. Um, R2, the bottom of those two resistors, I, I tend to work that one out first, um, will be the emitter voltage plus 0.6 divided by 10 times the base current. So we want to have at least 10 times the base current flowing through this voltage divided bias here um, to, to make it uh, what I always remember when I uh, was going through my training years ago is it makes it a stiff um, voltage regulator, not voltage regulator, voltage divider. So in this particular case, um, 6 plus 0.7, as we just mentioned, divided by 10 times the base current. So 10 milliamps divided by beta DC comes out 11.591 ohms, so I'll use 12k ohms as the nearest standard value. R1, the top resistor there, um, I, have, I use electron flow, so currents flowing up from earth through that forward bias, uh, bias junction, can't go through that diode there, so it flows up and flows up to 12 volts. There's already 10 times going through there, so plus another one times uh, makes 11 times the base current flowing through that top resistor. So therefore R1 equals the voltage drop across it, 12 volts minus 6.7 divided by 11 times the base current. Comes out at 83.35, so I'm going to use 8.2k ohms as the nearest standard value. And that's it, that's, that's the three I'll use, uh, and I'll plug that into LT Spice as you'll see in a sec, to see how that performs. For the second stage, the common emitter stage, just to provide a bit of voltage gain, uh, again to, to drive that uh, output from the, the buffer, the common collector stage that is, uh, up to our desired 7 dBm drive for that 50 ohm SBL1, so in other words uh, 1.414 volts peak to peak is what I'm looking for. Uh, in this particular case I'm just going to set the emitter voltage at 1 volt. Uh, again as I just mentioned 10 milliamps is the quiescent current through it and a beta DC uh, of 173. So in this particular case RE um, 1 volt divided by 10 milliamps equals 100 ohms uh, and what I will have in parallel with that is a 10k ohm trim pot which um, is that one just there and that trim pot has off its wiper a 100 nanofarad 
um, capacitor. So the 10k in parallel with 100 ohms, the overall resistance there will be roughly um, 100 ohms, so it doesn't impact the DC biasing uh, at all. And then by varying that um, trim pot up and down, I can vary at what point that 100 nanofarad capacitor sits, or how much of that 100 ohms roughly total resistance uh, is getting bypassed, which then um, effectively drives or changes the voltage gain for the overall amplifier. So that's, that's the whole idea of that. That then allows me to set that uh, 1.414 volts peak to peak. Anyway, slightly off track there. Um, R2, so exactly the same as the, uh, the upper stage. In this particular case it's going to be 1 volt plus 0.7 divided by 10 times the base current. Gives me that. Nearest standard value is 3k ohms. For R1, that top resistor, 12 volts minus 1.7 divided by 11 times the base current gives me 16199 so it's going to use 16k I say again 15k ohms as the, the nearest standard value right so in the collector um, circuit or in the collector of that um, amplifier there I'm going to have just a simple transformer uh, using a uh, FT37-43 uh, and I'm going to look to transform uh, 50 ohms, which is the SBL1, uh, 50 ohms up to 200 ohms. So I want to present to that 3904's collector roughly 200 ohms um, as a load. So that's the aim there. So that's the case. So 50 ohms being transformed up to 200 gives me a, uh, a an N or a turns ratio of square root of 200 over 50 equals 2. So therefore in terms of primary and secondary um, and I'll, I'll say primary and secondary that way um, the options are 6 to 12 so 6 times 2 equals 12 or 7 times 2 equals 14 or 8 times 2 equals 16 so I'll just sort of look at those three there and the other rule of thumb which I need to meet is to make sure that the um, the inductive reactance of the smaller um, winding needs to be at least 4 to 5 times what's hanging off it, the load hanging off it. So the smaller winding is definitely going to be the, on the side of the 50 ohms. So if I was to evaluate, which I'm going to, the 6 to 12 um, turns transformer, is going to be 6 turns on the 50 ohm side and 12 turns on the 200 ohm side. So I'm going to evaluate the, the, the smaller ones I just said. So if that's the case, 6 turns on an FT37-43 gives me 12.6 microhenries which I now need to plug into the inductive reactance formula so XL equals 2 pi FL so 2 pi F so the lowest frequency for the VFO is going to be roughly 11 megs times as I've just mentioned 12.6 microhenries comes out at 870 ohms which is well and truly in excess of 5 times um, 50 ohms I know I've got impedance there, but I'm just looking at the resistive, uh, the resistive part, which is 50 ohms in this particular case. So um, I can double tick that one. Um, and the reason why I chose 6 to 12 is because I had one just sitting in the junk box. So it saved me after one one before, and it, and it well and truly meets the criteria, so uh, not a problem there. And the frequencies I'm running at it, I'm not going to worry too much about um, any kind of, well, any kind of um, parasitic oscillations in that, in that, in the, in that particular Cool. Or windings, whatever. Anyway, so, starting to ramble here a bit. So, just moving on. Um, yeah, so that's what we see here. Um, that's a 6 volt um, regulator there. So, I'm running this circuit here, or the, yeah, the um, common collector and the common emitter of 12 volts. That's been dropped down to 6 volts, which is then going across into the, the Franklin oscillator there. Um, and as I mentioned before, there goes that 10k trim pot with a uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor hanging off that. And then ultimately, the end is a 50 ohm resistor to simulate the to simulate the um, uh, SBL1. Uh, as I mentioned, what I did do so after uh, coming up with those values. Hopefully, that's actually visible on the screen. Um, I elected to. Um, run those through LT Spice, so we have the common collector side here and then the common emitter over here um, and those are exactly the, the values that were calculated um, and you'll see down here I've got a, um, a split resistor there, so 70 plus 30 ohms equals 100 
and I've got just a, um, a notional 100 nanofarads at that point there. So that's simulating that wiper arm of the trim pot going up and down. And as we can see up here, uh, in that particular configuration there, with 70 ohms on the bottom and 30 ohms on top, um, I'm getting roughly uh, yeah, 750 millivolts peak down to minus 750, so well and truly over, or just over 1.414 volts uh, peak to peak. So I can just tweak that a bit and that would obviously change. So the simulation looked good um, for a uh, 0.25 volt input, which is what I'm getting out of the um, of the Franklin oscillator. So that basically, you know, for me said, yeah, okay, let's just go ahead and commit that circuit um, to the circuit board, which is why it's now down here um, soldered in. Um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, I won't say that the, the output is, is perfect, but like I said at the beginning, uh, I think for the purposes of what I'm trying to achieve, uh, it's just fine, and I'm going to run with it. So, uh, next steps now will be to, to box this up. Um, I will probably look to reorientate how these circuit boards run. Um, not sh quite sure if I'll go double-decker, or maybe have um, the, the buffer amplifier sitting on the back wall. We'll see what happens. Um, but the beauty of having the trim capacitors there, uh, as well as, if needed, that um, variable trim pot there, is I can tweak the values to uh, get the range of frequencies that I need at the amplitude that I need uh, once all the copper sides are put on. So there you go. Um, enough said for now. So I'll say 73, and I will put some thought into uh, what the next stage of this little uh, project will be, and um, we'll go from there. Anyway, take care, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.